Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the second chapter, the Shahnai of Bismillah Khan. We we'll firstly talk about the theme of the story. The Shahnai of Bismillah Khan deals with the theme that music transcends all barriers, no matter what kind of hurdles are there actually in life. Music is somewhat which soothes its way. Now, the story is about Bismillah Khan, who is one of the famous musicians of all times, who was from India, who has written lot of ragas and other musical compositions in Hindustani classical music. Now, the actual approach of Bismillah Khan was really secular. and because of that the author decided to write down and pin down his achievements the story is set about in the mughal era where there was emperor aurangzeb so emperor aurangzeb banned the playing of a musical instrument called pungi in the royal residence for it had a shrill and pleasant sound pungi became the generic name for reeded noise makers now aurangzeb had nobody in his time or at that particular moment in his royal residence who could actually know how to play pungi that is an instrument so because of it he decided that no one will ever play pungi because it had really shrill voice nobody knew exactly how to play it, play it and it was creating more of noise rather than that of a pleasant music so as soon as the news was heard by everyone else in the kingdom they decided to keep whosoever who made noise or who didn't know how to play was actually called a pungi because emperor had said that pungi is really unpleasant now that was more of a nickname a hilarious nickname which was required and which was used to make fun of few had thought that it would one day be revived a barber of a family of professional musicians who had access to the royal palace decided to improve the tonal quality of the pungi now not many people knew that one person would come to the kingdom and would actually revive what pungi means what exactly it represents how it is played and what beautifully it can be played in there was a barber who was actually from a family of musicians who who used to work in Aurangzeb's court and he was his barber so what he did was he decided that okay i'll improve the tonal quality i'll improve how exactly to play pungi he chose a pipe with natural hollow stem that was longer and broader than the pungi and made seven holes on the body of the pipes when he played on it closing and opening some of the holes soft and melodious sounds were produced now you can see the picture the picture here represents that of a flute so what happened is uh, that babu what he decided was he took a hollow um, stem and then he plugged in some holes in it and then he decided to play it how he would be playing it he used to blow some air and he used to close some of the holes and let other remain open now as soon as he started doing the starting practicing this out he made some really melodious tunes that was surprising for him he played the instrument before royalty and everyone was impressed the instrument was so different from the pungi had to be given a new name as the story goes since it was first played in the shah's chambers and was played by a nai its instrument was named as shehnai now what happened is that that person since we call a barber a nai in hindi language and it was made and played in shah's chamber that is aurangzeb uh, shah is a word which is utilized for a person who rules the particular area or the particular kingdom so since it was played in shah's chambers and uh, it was played by nai that's the reason this instrument was called as shehnai because it was looking very much different from that of pungi the sound of shehnai began to be considered auspicious and as for this reason it is still played in temples as an indispensable component of any north indian wedding now what happened is that that uh, as soon as the shehnai was made it was started playing so it was so melodious that uh, it was deemed as auspicious something really special something really blessed by the god and the gods uh, it is meant that the gods are finding it really interesting and they find it really soothing to you so in every north indian wedding and in temples this particular instrument is played in the past the shehnai was the part of the nobat or the traditional assembly of nine instruments found at royal courts till recently it was used only in temples and weddings now in the past during the past times uh, 
it was not only shehnai which was utilized and which was played there were nine different instruments and they were clubbed together and they were played together and which was really found in royal courts but nowadays uh, the shehnai is mostly played in temples and in weddings the credit for bringing the instrument on to the classical stage goes to ustad bismillah khan as a 5 year old bismillah khan played billi danda near a pond in the ancient estate of dumrao in bihar now we know what shehnai was how it was made and in which kingdom it was made now the credit of bringing shehnai to a classical stage now classical stage here means that not only in temples and in weddings to make it into hindustani music to in make it inculcated into the different tones and different songs or ragas was the work done by ustad bismillah khan Now we are going to start to know more about Bismillah Khan from the line as a five-year-old, since we need to know how exactly the legend was made. So here, how the scene is set. The scene is set that Bismillah Khan is a small five-year-old boy. He is playing gilli danda at his place in his estate in Bihar. He would regularly go to the nearby Bhiraji Temple to sing the Bhojpuri Chaita. at the end of which he would earn a big laddu weighing 1.25 kg a prize given by the local maharaja now what happens is that he since there are a lot of people who visit temples uh, so kids also imitate their parents imitate their elder ones so he used also used to go to bhiraji temple now he had a different motive here he used to sing a bhojpuri chaita it is a folk song and he used to play it and after playing it he used to received a laddu weighing 1.25 kg from the local maharaja as an appreciation to whatever he sang this happened 80 years ago and the little boy has traveled far to earn the highest civil in award in india the bharat ratna now see from there playing gilli danda going to the temple and just singing a folk song in bhojpuri to receiving bharat ratna award which is the highest civilian award which can be ever given to a person in india bismillah khan had made lot in his time born on 21st march 1916 bismillah belonged to a well known family of musicians from bihar His grandfather Rasool Books Khan was the Shehnai Nawaz of the Bhojpur King's Court. Now see, here Bismillah Khan, how his family has been defined is that everyone in his family in the past, in the ancestral times, his grandfathers, great grandfathers, his father were actually musicians. So. His grandfather was actually a Shehnai Nawaz. Now, Shehnai Nawaz means the highest person among the musicians who used to play a Shehnai in the Bhojpur King's Court in Bihar. His father, Pagambar Bhaks, and other paternal ancestors were also great Shehnai players. The young boy took to music early in life. at the age of 3 when his mother took him to his maternal uncle's house in banaras bismillah was fascinated watching his uncle's practice the shehnai now the thing is everyone in his father's family were actually musicians so when he was of 3 years old and her mother actually just uh, took him to his maternal uncle's house that Or what we commonly say in Hindi, Nani ka ghar, which was there in Banaras. So there too, her mother also somewhat belonged to a musician family. So there he noticed his maternal uncles, his mamas, to actually who were playing shenais. Now that also made him really fascinated and really interested about the instrument. Soon, Bismillah started accompanying his uncle Ali Box to the Vishnu Temple of Banaras when Box was employed to play the shenai. Ali Bugs would play the Shehnai and Bismillah would sit captivated for hours on end. Now what happened is as soon as he grew up a bit he started accompanying his uncle Ali Bugs uh, to a temple a Vishnu temple in Banaras and there Ali Bugs used to actually play Shehnai and he used to just sit there he here i mean bismillah used to sit there and he used to perform and he used to think that okay what if i would have been performing rather than his uncle and he was really captivated by the music Slowly, he started getting lessons in playing the instrument and would sit practicing throughout the day. For years to come, the temple of Balaji and Mangala Maya and the banks of the Ganga became the young apprentice's favorite haunts where he could practice in solitude. 
Now, as soon as he gained senses, as soon as Bismillah Khan started to hold the Chennai properly and started to play, he was given lessons by his uncles. And then in uh, temples of Balaji and Mangala Maya and then in, during the banks of Ganga, he used to sit there silently. There was a lot of peace and he could actually practice there sitting alone. That was the place or those were the few places where Bismillah Khan used to practice in his early years. The flowing waters of the Ganga inspired him to improvise and invent ragas that were earlier considered to be beyond the range of the Shehnai. Now, usually the ragas were uh, actually fabricated and they were actually made from different instruments but not Shehnai. So, when Ganges used to um, actually flow, the river used to flow, it has a certain pace, it has a certain music. If a person is particularly interested in music, uh, he or she will definitely make an impact and say that, okay, uh, the water is flowing in this sense or maybe it is having a particular pace, it has a particular sound. So, that similar sound made Bismillah to actually focus and to play ragas on his Chennai, which was earlier considered as impossible or beyond the range of Chennai. At the age of 14, Bismillah accompanied his uncle to the Allahabad Music Conference. At the end of his recital, Ustad Fayaz Khan patted the young boys back and said, Work hard and you shall make it. Now see, Ustad Fayaz Khan was also one of the famous and renowned musicians of Hindustani classical music. And at the age of 14, when Bismillah actually had went through Allahabad Music Conference, Music Conference is a place where a lot of musicians, they come together and they perform and they are appreciated. It is a meetup where everyone is discussing music. So at that time when he performed, one of the famous musicians actually appreciated his work. With the opening of All India Radio in Lucknow in 1938 came Bismillah's big break. He soon became an often heard Chennai player on radio. When India gained independence on 15th August 1947, Bismillah Khan became the first Indian to great nation with his Chennai. Now, when the concept of All India Radio came in Lucknow, where all the important news or any kind of entertainment shows were played on the radio for all Indian people, at that time Pakistan was also Pakistan and Bangladesh, it was a part of India. And when, on 15 August 1947, when we had uh, signed in the declaration which declared India and Pakistan to separate nations and independent nations, at that time, Bismillah Khan was the first Indian to greet the nation with independence with the Shanai. That is, he played the Shanai on that day. He poured his heart out into Raag Kafi from the Red Fort to an audience which included Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru who later gave the famous twist with destiny speech. Now the thing is that before the new Prime Minister of India actually decided to give his speech which was named as twist with destiny that was Jawaharlal Nehru, Bismillah Khan played a Shehnai and soothed the atmosphere with his beautiful music with Ra Kafi. Now you can definitely analyze from the fact that earlier it was meant that Shehnai couldn't actually be played in Ragas because it was something far more expendable. But now here it's mentioned that Bismillah Khan actually played a Rag named Ra Kafi from his Shehnai. Bismillah Khan given many memorable performances both in India and abroad. His first trip abroad was to Afghanistan where King Zahir Shah was also taken in by the maestro that he gifted him priceless Persian carpets and other souvenirs. Now Bismillah Khan he has given a lot of performances all over India and abroad. So one time he performed in front of Afghanistan's king, King Zahir Shah and uh, Zahir Shah he became so impressed by Bismillah Khan's performance and his way of playing Chennai that he gifted him very famous and very valuable Persian carpets. King of Afghanistan was not only the one to be fascinated with Bismillah's music, film director Vijay Bhatt was also impressed after hearing Bismillah play at a festival that he named a film after his instrument called Gunj Uthi Shehnai. Now, 
um since miss mela used to play at lot of places so one time what happened is there was a film director named vijay bhat who heard miss mela play chennai and what he did was he decided that okay i'm going to make a movie and on that movie's name i'm going to keep the name of chennai which miss mela khan played so well so he named that particular movie goond uthi chennai The film was a hit, and one of Bismillah Khan's composition, "Dil Ka Khulana," hai toot gaya. Turned out to be the nationwide chart buster. Now, see, since Vijay Bhat was really impressed by how uh, Bismillah Khan used to play, so what he did was he decided that okay, I'll keep the name of the movie on his instrument as well as I'm going to put one of the music or one of the song of the movie. which is composed and which is played by bismillah khan and its name was dil ka khilona hai toot gaya despite his huge success in the celluloid world bismillah khan's venture in film music was limited to two vijay bhat's goon juthi shehnai and vikram srinivas's kannada venture sanadhi apanna now the thing is that celluloid world here means that um earlier there were no theaters so there was used to be a celluloid sheet of white color where everything was displayed on it and um there were actually lot of parda theaters though called parda theaters for a reason that uh, the things or the movies were actually played on that white parda and there were no particular theater is no speaker system so bismillah khan he only played for two of the movies one was vikram bhat's gunj uthi chennai and other was a kannad music and a kannad film so these were the only two projects which bismillah actually had utilized of that of the film industry I just can't come to terms with the artificiality and glamour of the film world he says with emphasis awards and recognitions came thick and fast bismillah khan became the first indian to be invited to perform at the prestigious lincoln central hall in the united states of america now bismillah khan mentioned that he didn't want to play in the film music and he didn't want his shine to be utilized there his uh, talent to be utilized there he found the film world quite glamorous and artificial then lot of awards he received lots and lots of awards and then he was invited the very first indian to be invited to play his music in lincoln central hall which is in united states of america he also took part in the world exposition in montreal in the cannes art festival and in the osaka trade fair so well known did he become intentionally and internationally that an auditorium in tehran was named after him Teher Mosik Ustad Bismillah Khan. Now see, he was so famous that he was called at lot many famous international events. Kane Sat Fest Festival, it's still present. It's still one of the famous festivals, one of the famous places where a lot of people from with varied arts and music actually come together and they discuss and they display their arts. Then he was called in World Exposition in Montreal, Osaka Trade Fair. Now see, there were lot many events where Bismillah Khan was actually invited to play, and at the same time. His uh, on his name in Tehran, an auditorium was named Teher Masik Mustad Bismillah Khan. Now see the kind of fame he was receiving because he was a really great person who used to play with effortless and fluent music in Chennai. National awards like the Padma Shri, the Padma Bhushan, and the Padma Vibhushan were conferred to him in two thousand one. Ustad Bismillah Khan was awarded the highest civilian award, the Bharat Ratna. Now see, Padma Shri, Padma Bhushan, and Padma Vibhushan are some of the awards which are given to people who are explicit in field of arts. But in two thousand one, he was also given the highest award, a uh, highest civilian award which can be ever achieved in India, a Bharat Ratna. That was one of his biggest achievements. With the coveted award resting on his chest and his eyes glinting with rare happiness, he said, "All I would like to say is, teach your children music. This is Hindustan's richest tradition. Even the West is now coming to learn our music." Now, his only message to the people, to the parents out there, was that teach music, children. Now, the only thing which Bismillah Khan actually wanted to convey to parents was that they should teach their children some music, Hindustani music, because even the Western culture and the Western people are actually influenced and are really keen and interested to learn our own music.
that was one of the examples and one of the messages he wanted to give to the world especially to the parents in india who encouraged less children to take up music in spite of having traveled all over the world khan saab as he was fondly called is exceedingly fond of banaras and dumrao and they remain for him the most wonderful towns of the world now bismillah khan had traveled to a lot of places but despite of that fact he really loved banaras and dumrao now these were the places where during his early years in his career or the early years of his childhood was where exactly he used to practice he used to learn so that is something which is really close to his heart and as well as the cities a student of his once wanted him to head a shehnai school in the usa and the student promised to recreate the atmosphere of banaras by replicating the temples there but khan saab asked him if the temples would be able to get the river ganga that is he was really interested the student was actually interested in taking khan saab this mela khan's short name and nickname was khan saab since it's more looks more professional and looks somewhat more of a learned person would actually be called so at that time his student wanted that okay bismilla khan ji please come and uh, teach in the chennai school in usa and i will recreate the atmosphere of banaras i'll recreate the temples there and you will feel like you are just like in banaras so at that time khansa mentioned that okay would you be able to flow or somewhat give me a sense of feeling that ganga is flowing there now that was something which was really impossible for the student to create and which mentioned that khansa really loved the atmosphere of the gangas and the ghats where he used to perform when he was really young in his age later he is remembered to have said that is why whenever i am in a foreign country i keep yearning to see hindustan while in mumbai i think of only banaras and the holy ganga and while in banaras i miss the unique mutt of dumra now see since being born and brought up in bihar and then in banaras he used to he was really fond of that particular atmosphere and that is can be well explained through the kind of statements he is giving khan saab is giving is that he whenever he is in a foreign country he really misses uh, about hindustan going seeing our his native land and then while in fact in fact he is in mumbai at that time too he is also missing ganga and then when he goes to banaras he is sitting by his side the ganga then he is missing the mutt of dumra Mats are basically a group and it's a place where the pilgrims and the priests actually come and perform. And they used to stay there. They will perform every of the kind of different riots, religious riots, and artis at that particular place. Ustad Bismillah Khan's life is a perfect example of the rich cultural heritage of India, one that effortlessly accepts that a devout Muslim like him. and very naturally play the shahnai every morning at the kashi vishwanath temple now you must definitely realize that khan saab was actually muslim who used to play in the hindu temples now that means that being of any religion does not mean that you need to be of you need to play at that particular place being a muslim he used to play shahnai in the temples in, at a religious place which was for hindus not for muslims that is the rich example of cultural diversity as well as acceptance that music knows no religion now let's get to some of the key terms we have generic name now it's given to a group or a class of people it is it can be varied it can be just like okay muslims we have then we have hindus as if you want to divide people on the basis of their religion reeded is actually wind instruments which have reeds like flutes and clarinets which are basically have holes where you need to actually blow out the air and then trap the music trap the air in between and create music auspicious means promising to bring a good fortune being really lucky indispensable means that without that without that particular person things cannot be done taken in by means really attracted to that particular thing on end it is it means that very long and things have been going for a lot of time and they're not at all stopping ensembles means things which are actually considered as group like we mentioned that at that earlier time in the past shehnai was the part of nine instruments so it was an ensemble then parental ancestors they are the ancestors of the father side of the family 
Souvenirs are basically the small things we pick up on the way through our journeys, which makes us remember that we exactly visited that particular place and traveled to it. Chart buster means record breaker that all the records were being broken at that time. Celluloid means a way of referring to films. Celluloid films are basically the negatives and the kind of uh, thing, the kind of cameras we used to earlier have. Conferred means usually given an award or a degree. Coveted means much desire that, okay, I want every of that particular thing. Devout means believing strongly in a particular religion. And that religion doesn't necessarily mean that being a Hindu or Muslim, it means more about... Now here, as we can take an example of Ustad Bismillah Khan, his religion was music. He was devoted to music and to Chennai. So that can be mentioned as a devout. Venture is a project that often actually involves risk. Let's get to the questions now. Okay, this is the first question. Why did Aurangzeb ban the playing of Homi? Now, this is a really interesting yet really small answer that during the time of Emperor Aurangzeb, uh, the people who used to play Pungi couldn't play it efficiently and properly. And the voice which came was really shrill. Therefore, Aurangzeb decided that it is really pointless and noisy to play the Pungi and he banned. Next question. How is a Chennai different from a Pungi? Now, um, Chennai, we can say that, okay, it can be played beautifully. Then it is a hollow structure with a lot of holes in it. And that was how it was invented by a knight. You can write all these. And you can also, in fact, draw a particular Chennai and a Pungi. And you can differentiate through the diagram as well. That's all in this lecture. Thank you for joining us.